the Game Boy, the Brick, the DMG, the first cartridge based handheld ever released by Nintendo and it was my first handheld. And for a lot of you watching it might have been your first console entirely. See in 1989 Nintendo came out with this beautiful little console and there was nothing else like it. It had a whole bunch of games just like the NES and you could play it on the go. It just had a massive library of great games that to me are still fun to play today. Now with no backlight and double A batteries the Game Boy is really starting to show its age in 2023. So I decided to get some parts and improve on a broken Game Boy that I found. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. So without further ado, let's get modded. Alright, so I bought this Game Boy a while ago at the flea market. The box isn't in the best shape, but that's okay because we're going to be focusing on the Game Boy. It was listed as not working, so let's go see what's inside. There was no manuals or anything, but just a couple of small inserts. But yeah, this Game Boy is definitely well played. Uh, it's got some marker on it, scratches, all kinds of stuff. But we're just going to be replacing the shell anyway, and I think this is a great candidate for that. So here's another Game Boy that I have. This is a one of the clear models. I wanted to see if we can sort of replicate this. I always love the look of these Game Boys, so let's see if we can do a modern version of it. So we start by using your tri-wing screwdriver and opening the screws on the back. Don't forget the ones underneath the battery door. So after that, you can just open it up just like this and be very careful with this ribbon cable. It takes a bit of force to pull it, but not too much. So let's focus on the back part of the Game Boy for now. Then it's as simple as taking off the couple screws that are holding this board down. I think this Game Boy has been worked on. Not all the screws were there, but I don't know if that's normal or not. I, I think they're all supposed to be there. Then remove the two screws holding the headphone jack in place and you can just gently lift the whole thing up and take the board out. Essentially, if you're replacing everything like we're doing now, this is kind of all that you need. And this is our case, a beautiful translucent, shiny, glittery, I don't know what to call it, uh, case. And it's it's really cool for what it is, uh, especially for the price. This this Game Boy logo right here, it's engraved, the text on the back as well. So let's open it up and use the bottom half for now. These cases always come with a bunch of screws and parts that you can either use these ones or the ones from the original Game Boy. I like to mix and match whatever fits best. So the screw threads on the case were a bit stiff, so I had to really push down on some of these. This is normal, especially when you have like a freshly molded case, so don't worry too much about it. But as always, be careful. Now let's gently place the board back just the way it is. It helps if you take pictures when you're taking it apart, just to see where everything goes, but it's pretty straightforward. Now this side part's always a bit tricky. Make sure you're careful with the transistors on the board. Same goes for the board for the headphone jack. It should just kind of fall into place. And let's put the screws back in. As you can see, some of these were really stiff, but eventually it all came in. Make sure you check the battery compartment that the springs for the battery are, are nice and in place. But yeah, that should do it for this part. Now let's move on to the front part of the Game Boy. So this part comes with a board and a screen. And the tricky thing is that it doesn't come with the speaker, so you're going to have to desolder your speaker from the old Game Boy and solder it onto this board. And don't worry, it's only two points. It's very easy and I'll show you how to do it right now. So as you can see, we're removing the screws from the board. So we can separate the board from the case. The speaker should plop right out with it, just like this. Then with your soldering iron, try to desolder these parts right here and then you can just pull the cable right out and there's your speaker. I always save everything for you because you just never know. Even though these screens are busted, I'm sure there's some parts of these boards that I can use in the future. Like I said, this one has already been worked on so it was a bit harder for me to put the cables into these holes as there was already solder on it. But it should be as simple as just poking them through. The screen has a daughter board that was already connected for me, but it might be disconnected. It's just a little plug that you plug into it. The screen also comes with a mounting bracket, which is really important to get everything aligned perfectly onto the Game Boy. And now let's put in the buttons. Don't forget the top power button. I did, and I had to go back. I had to disassemble everything. The rubber membranes have these tabs with holes that you can put on pins, so it's pretty hard to get this wrong. Now let's put everything back together. 
So the screen goes in like this. Don't worry too much about aligning it because we can adjust that later through the software. And let's put this speaker in. There's a tab that shows you which direction it should be facing. Then the board itself goes in like this and connect the ribbon cable to the board. Then we put all the screws back in and we should be good to go for this part. Then we have this crazy stubborn ribbon cable. I don't know why, whether it's on the front or the back of the Game Boy, this ribbon cable was super stiff. So it really took some force to get into it. Then it's as simple as just sandwiching everything together and putting all the screws back into place. I don't put everything on too tight because I found that even though this case was made for it, the contrast button got stuck when I made it too tight, so I left it a bit loose. Then as a last part, I have this USB-C lithium ion battery that we can just pop into the battery compartment. I found it easier if you just remove all the extra springs and stuff. Mine didn't come with a battery door. I think some of them do, but I thought it would be fine if we can just charge it without the battery door. And let's turn it on, see if everything works. There we go, beautiful. Now you can see the screen isn't aligned, that's no issue. Because by pressing the contrast button, we can access the menu and align everything just like this. And we should be able to just pop everything in place. Now we clean the screen really, really, really well. And we put the lens on it that came with our case. So we take off the adhesive and we plop it in just like that. Get a satisfying peel on the screen there and we should be done. Now last but not least, we have this copy of Pokemon Blue. This is the one I kind of daily uh, play on. It's the one I'm using to currently try and complete the Professor Oak challenge. So I found these clear Game Boy cases and I thought it would complement the rest of the mod really well if we kind of put it all together. I already swapped the battery out on this one because it wasn't working and you can see I put the date on it. And yeah, putting it all together should be super easy because it's just one screw. This screwdriver is called a Game Bit. You would need the special one to open consoles like the GameCube, Super Nintendo and Game Boy cartridges. And look at that, that looks absolutely beautiful. It all fits together really nicely. That's, that's a sight right there. And let's turn the Game Boy on and go through some of these features. Now the first and obvious one is all the different colors. There's no color palettes like on the Game Boy Color, but for Game Boy games, I prefer it that way. In this mod, I actually like the black and white better than the classic green one, just because it fits better with the overall Game Boy. Then there's also a pixel effect, which is kind of an LCD kind of thing. And this is one of my favorite features about this. If you combine this with the green color, it absolutely looks really, really close to an original Game Boy with backlight and all the bells and whistles. Then if you look in the upper left corner, there's a battery display. This is optional, like all of these effects are optional, but the, since we got a rechargeable battery, this actually tells us how much battery is left. So yeah, super happy with how everything came out. And there you have it, our fully modded Game Boy. So for comparison's sake, I got the original one next to it and you can definitely see how it's a lot easier on the ice to play with the modded Game Boy. And there you have it. Uh, we've got the Game Boy all modded. I'm super happy with the way this came out. This is definitely going to be my main Game Boy from now on. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, I'd love to hear it. Please hit me up in the comments. I read every comment because I'm still in a position where I'm able to do that. And I hope I explained everything okay. It was really hard to film everything at the same time as uh, working on it. So I, I hope everything's okay. But I'm really happy with how everything turned out. And thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.